Hey fellow brewers, welcome back. Uh, this is my second video. The first one was about the grandfather versus the browse system. And at the end of it, I talked about, I'm gonna make a video about condensation collection with the browse system. So here we go. I'm gonna make this video and we're gonna see what turns out by putting a steam top on it and uh, collecting that steam. And then I'm gonna do an outside boil and see what the difference is. Okay, I have my brew kettle set up. I have my wart chiller, my pump, and some other fittings uh, that I'm gonna use to do this condensation test with. First thing I wanna show you is something that they do not have on their website or on their videos is they started putting a one and a half inch flange with a tri-clamp on it. And you're gonna see why this is so important a little later on in this video. I also have a valve at the bottom so I can connect my pump on and off on here when I want to pump my wart when I'm through here. But right now I'm going to be using my pump to pump water through my plate chiller. And I have eight gallons of water in my sink. And I'm going to pull my water from the sink, run it through my pump, and back through my plate chiller just like you cool wart down. And... Then I'm gonna connect this to the, the flange here, the one half track lever. I'm gonna hook this up to the kettle to trap that steam. So what I've done is I've brought my temperature up to 155, and then I'm gonna run this up to boil, which is about 210 where I live at here in Texas. And then when it's, it reaches that boil, I'm gonna time it for one hour from there and we're gonna see just how much wart we're gonna lose. Now, in order to hook this up, what you have to have is an extension. It's a back-to-back -back one and a half inch extension that you're gonna to have to put on your kettle and then put your plate chiller on that. So I need two hands, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook that up and I'll be right back. Okay, we have our plate chiller hooked up with our extension now, the tri-clover clamps on it. And what I've done is I've put the bottom of it down, as you can see, facing downward. And you can see the water coming in and going out, cooling the chiller. And it goes over into my sink and 10 gallons of water and it's cooling it. And this water is about 78 degrees right now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our boil kettle and bring it up to a rolling boil and then we're going to start our one hour timer from then before we get to a rolling boil i want to show you a couple things that i've done here so we can see what's going on i put a bucket down below me with some marks graduated marks on a gallon and another thing i've done is i've run a small test before i've run this big test and there was a little bit of steam coming out between the lid and the kettle. And I cheated and put some of these little paper clips on there on three sides. And that stopped like 99% of the steam coming up. Now, I think Brown would probably, when they see this, that they'll probably make a kit to go on here because you need a couple extra fittings and maybe make a silicone gasket that would go around the lid and some kind of a little clip that you can put on there and that would take all that steam and keep it right in here and the plate chiller. Now here is another added benefit of using this system is all the water that I have in this sink is only going through the pump and back through the plate chiller and then back into the sink. And the water remains fresh. I'm not taking the water and running it through a spray head and then running that water back down and saving it. That way you have all the, the wart and the contaminants or whatever comes off of the wart back into your water. This way you don't have that. When you get through, actually, you have some nice warm water to clean your parts in. 
So it's a closed loop system. And all your condensation is going to come through your wart chiller and it's going to drip out the bottom. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put me a tri clover fitting, probably with a 90 degree, and make it where I can run it down into a floor drain or waste bucket. But for today, it's just going to drip out where we can see it dripping out going down into the bucket. Now we've reached our 210 boil. And I'll go over to the kettle and open the lid and see what we got going on. Yeah, we have a nice rapid boil. And as you can see, there's steam coming off of it. I hope you can. There it is. So what I'm going to do is put the lid back on. And earlier, I spoke about the little paper clips. And I'm going to put three of these on the lid in about thirds. And we're going to see how much steam we get out of the top of this lid. Right now, looking at it, I don't see any steam coming out. So now we have our pump set up. And it's pulling water through the sink. And I'm going to see what the temperature of this water is as we get started here. And it's about 83 degrees. We'll check that later. So anyway, our pump is circulating the water very well. You can see the water flowing and it's going through our plate chiller. And as you can see, uh, my hands on it and it's just, it's not even warm. Now you get over into these fittings, it gets pretty hot. So you wanna be careful there. So we have the water circulating through the plate chiller. And as you can see, we're getting condensation coming out and just cold, it's not even warm. So that's the uh, wart that's boiling, being boiled off. So, and it's dropping down into my bucket below. So we're gonna keep an eye on that and see what happens in another hour. And we can see just how much our condensate is uh, being lost during a boil. So we'll check you back in an hour. There's one more thing I want to focus on. Uh, it's the water that we used. We had 10 gallons of fresh water for cooling. And I'm going to see what the temperature is after an hour. And it shows it's rated about 113 degrees. Stick your hand in it. It feels just like a, a nice warm bath water. So what's great about this is I don't have any wart or any grains or anything in this and uh, none of the wort that is evaporated from the brood cattle has went in here this is nice fresh clean water that i can use to clean all my my valves and parts and instruments in okay we have finished from our mashing from 155 degrees and then we cranked it up from 155 up to our 210 boil temperature and that rise in temperature from the 155 to 210 took about 30 minutes and then we added one hour boil on top of that so let's see what we have left our temperature has been turned off and we're going to remove the clips from the kettle we're going to take our lid off we're going to see how much wort or water we have left and when I'm looking at it, it's just a little over six and a half gallons. But for sure, what we can do is we can go down and see how much we lost in condensate in our measuring bucket. And as you can see, that we've lost just a little less than one half of a gallon. Looks like it may be like 62 ounces would be very close. So, about 62 ounces, which is less than a half a gallon on seven gallons. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this whole process over and I'm gonna boil it with the lid off like a lot of people normally do without any kind of condensate on it. And we'll see how much we lose in that same period of time. There's one thing I want to bring to your attention. When we're brewing beer, we always have high temperatures at our boil. 
over 200 degrees. And we have to keep our thinking caps on all the time to make sure that we're not touching a hot valve or pipe or hose. So, you know, just be careful with that. Uh, when we were using our pump to cool our plate chiller, um, I played with it a little bit and I had it about halfway open and about halfway closed. And when I did, the back side of the plate chiller got pretty pretty hot. And uh, I don't think it would burn you, but it would be very uncomfortable if you grabbed it and tried to move it or something like that. You wouldn't want to do that. Uh, but after I opened my valve all the way, the chiller just dropped, temperature dropped just almost immediately. Except for one little place. It's just right up in this corner, and that's where the steam comes in through the chiller into the back. It's a hot spot right there. So I just want to bring that to your attention and be careful with that and be careful with all your brewing. Uh, one other thing, uh, when we got through this condensate test, I went around my room and I looked everywhere to see if I had any condensation dripping on the wood or the metals or the walls or anything. Uh, everything was just completely bone dry. I was really happy about that, I guess. Okay, I've brought my unit outside. I always like to brew outside because indoor use always seems to generate a lot of steam and it's all over your woodwork and walls and ceilings. And so I, I do uh, all my brewing outside and I hope that's about to change for me. So what I'm gonna do is I have my temperature at about 155 and from my mash temperature, and then I'm gonna take it up to 212 and then boil at 212 for one hour and we're going to see how much wort that we lose to evaporation um, right at the moment i'm using a lid to try to get my temperature up a little bit and as you can see i have exactly seven gallons in here so we're gonna let this thing cook and come back in an hour and um see what happens but i'm going to take this lid back off i'm just using it to bring my uh temperature up to get to that boil right now so if anything i'm i'm holding back a little bit of um condensation and evaporation and loss so we'll see in about an hour okay we have finished our one hour boil and our thermostat down there is like one nine one ten and I'm gonna open the lid and we have a nice little rolling boil in here and we've been doing that for an hour and I actually decided to leave the lid on and let the steam come out the side port more you can feel it it comes out of there too it's hot so we're gonna shut this down now and we're gonna see just about how much we've lost in wart so we're gonna turn everything off. The mash is off, the boil's off, the pump's off, everything's off. All right, we're gonna lift the lid on this kettle and we're gonna look. And we've got right at about six and a quarter gallons of water so we've lost good solid three quarters of a gallon of water it's just a little under three quarters i would say we have about 6.2 gallons of water left okay the loss inside from the plate chiller was 6.8 percent or 62 ounces the loss outside without the plate chiller with the lid on and the side port open was 11.5% or 102 ounces. Okay guys, that's the end of the condensate plate chiller video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's going to help me a lot when I brew in the summer in Texas. It's hot. And now I can brew it inside without having that steam coming all the way through my room. And I can also brew in the wintertime the same way. So I hope that's helped you. 
And I just would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel because I've got some other neat stuff coming up. My next one is going to be how to ferment under pressure with a five gallon keg. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld a flange on the bottom of the keg. And then I'm gonna take a valve in a tube and weld that together. And then I'll be able to put that in the bottom and use it as adjustable racking arm. So come back and see me on that video and have fun brewing.